been said every car tells a story, and this one recalls the day, the moment, America lost a president. Five decades later, JFK's limousine remains one of the most powerful symbols of that day. The convertible the president and first lady were riding in through Dallas, a 1961 four-door Lincoln Continental. Big, beautiful Lincoln. Nearly 50 years after those shots rang out in Dealey Plaza, there was now near silence when people see that car, where it now sits, at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. We all have images of that day burned into our, our minds, and every one of those images includes that car. It's such a, a vital and, and intimate part of, of the assassination. I mean, that's where the president's life essentially ended, so people are, are really drawn to it. So many asking those what ifs. What if the car was moving faster? What if the bubble top had been on it? The limousine had no armor when the president was assassinated. It was brought back to Washington, studied for evidence by the Secret Service and the FBI. It was refurbished with new titanium armor, a permanent top added. It was put back into the presidential fleet, driven until the 1970s. It was codenamed X-100, though Americans only saw it on black and white TV. That Lincoln limo was actually of midnight blue. It's been said President Kennedy did not like the bubble top, and when the rain cleared that fateful Friday, the bubble was removed as the sun emerged in Dallas. Standing orders in the Kennedy White House where any time the weather would permit it, that roof came off. What is unclear all these years later is whether that top, which wasn't bulletproof, would have made any difference on that day, November 22nd, 1963. And the museum told us late today that Clint Hill, the First Lady's Secret Service agent who jumped into the car that day, will revisit the limo this week.